Hi, I'm Chef Jamie Roraback from the Lincoln Culinary Institute in Hartford, Connecticut. I'm going to show you one way of making mashed potatoes. There's many procedures and techniques. I'll show you what we do here at school. Uh, we're starting out with potatoes. I just happen to have an Idaho baking type of potato, which are very good for boiling. But you can choose Idaho uh, Yukon Golds, rather, Maine all-purpose potatoes, a lot of wonderful ones, even red potatoes. I am going to peel them, but it's not at all uncommon for people to do skin on mashed potatoes. Wash them very well, certainly. But we want to cut them very consistently. So I'm going to take this potato, cut it in half lengthwise, lay each cut side down so they're safe, cut each half and half again, so we've now cut it in quarters lengthwise. And then I want to cut very consistently, not much more than about one inch in pieces. I want them to cook evenly, but I also don't want them to take too long to cook either. So about one inch pieces are very good. And you can get these done in advance. You can store them in a bowl of cold water. I'm going to proceed and get these cooking. So I have a pot with some ready to go. Let's add these potatoes to it. And what we want to do is add enough cold water. You want to bring this up to gradual temperature. Cold water, enough to cover these potatoes. And it's very nice indeed to give them a little bit of flavor while they're cooking by adding a generous pinch of salt. So our goal now is to put a lid on this and bring it up to a boil and then check for doneness. Okay, so the potatoes have been boiling now to the point where they're now approaching doneness. And the best thing to do is to just insert a paring knife and it goes in easy and it removes easy. Obviously you do not want to cook this to the point where they melt and fall apart. They will be overly gluey and overly starchy. Potatoes can absorb too much water and when you mash it, it can make them sort of a gummy consistency. But these are perfect, we're ready to drain them. So now we'll go into the colander, get it all drained out, keep them out of that liquid. Let it drain really well. Now I usually use the same exact pan that I boiled them in to save dishes. Your dishwasher will like that. But basically in that same pan we're going to be adding heavy cream and we want to actually get it to the point where this cream comes up to a boil and reduces and chefs, yes, we love a little bit of butter. But obviously you could use many different forms of dairy product in mashed potatoes. Could be half and half, it could be whole milk, all those things will work out perfectly fine. So we're going to bring this up to a boil and let it reduce a little bit and that's what we're going to add to the mashed potatoes. Now. Mashing your potatoes, there are a number of schools of thought on this. Um, you could basically use a couple different types of tools. Old fashioned style, you can use a masher, hand masher, those are gonna yield you chunky. At school, we tend to be preferring to use something called a ricer, which is one of these little guys, that looks like a big garlic press. So let me show you how to use that. You're gonna basically take these drained potatoes, spoon some in, and there's a plate in the bottom of this and you can pick different sizes, but basically, this is one of the better tools to give good quality mashed potatoes. So we're actually gonna just squirt it right into there and continue on one more time. So it's like using a big garlic press. If you wanted, you could have put whole cloves of garlic while you were boiling these potatoes. That would be a really nice way of making flavorful, garlicky mashed potatoes. And the garlic would actually go right through this ricer as well. Okay, our potatoes are mashed and our heavy cream and butter mixture has been brought up to a boil. And it's done what we chefs call reduction or reduce some, meaning it started out as perhaps a cup and a half and now it's reduced down to about a cup. But basically one a little bit thicker, a little bit richer. So let's go ahead and now prepare the mashed potatoes. So what we'll do is now take this cream and butter mixture into our potatoes that we had used a ricer to actually accomplish it. And this is sort of a, you know, as you go thing. As chefs, we would have ability to use this cream and butter mixture for other things. So I'm gonna start with maybe three quarters of that mixture. And while I'm gonna be mixing this, I do wanna get the seasoning taken care of. So I'm gonna at least start with salt and pepper. And then you can go forward and just go ahead and fold or mix it in. What you don't want to do is to really agitate this too much. You know, using a food processor would be the worst thing you can do. Um, so you really want to fold, get it incorporated. Make it as creamy as you'd like. Ultimately, you do want to taste this and make some decision on the salt. Keeping in mind that there are people who just prefer salt and pepper at the table and they can finish it. So you never want to over season. It's not only about how you as a chef want it. It's Okay, it's close to where I want it, but there might be people that, you know, would want more seasoning and they can do it at the table. But we're going to do a little trick. We'll uh, present it, have a pre-warm dish. We're going to put a little bit in in this fashion just by spooning some in. But maybe to top it off and make it look a little bit more presentable, what we're going to do is take this pastry bag. There's always pastry skills in savory. We're going to add some of these mashed potatoes to that. And we're going to go ahead and put it right in. And we'll use this as a way of finishing the... Uh, final presentation. So we'll get that down in the bag, get it all down to the point, and we got a little plain tip here today. You could use star tips. Somebody's just going to finish this by now making it look fancy by just doing a little bit more piping just to give it a little bit more definition. Now you could just serve it as is. Let's say you were not ready for your party yet. I would tend to drizzle this with a little bit of melted butter 
And then you could pop these in the oven just before you're ready to go, just to get them hot again and maybe brown the edges a little bit. But that's a delicious, classic mashed potato, salt, pepper flavor. You cannot go wrong. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Chef Jamie Rohrabach from the Lincoln Culinary Institute in Hartford, Connecticut. And you too can be a chef or a pastry chef with hard work and dedication. Thank you very much.